Hello, this is Retro Markey, and today we're going to do something a little bit different. I've got a pickup from the Swindon Scrap Store Project Reboot that I'm volunteering at at the moment, and it's a very nice machine indeed. So we're going to have a look inside of it, we're going to see what's there and what's missing, do a little bit of cleaning, and then get the machine hopefully up and running, all being well. Uh, the machine itself is based on an Athlon XP AMD 2800 Plus processor and I think it has um, a couple of sticks of RAM in there but uh, we'll check that as we delve inside. So we've got some nice ports at the front that cover up the floppy drive and a couple of CD and DVD drives around the side here. Got a lovely Packard Bell logo and a lovely grey sort of sheen around the edge. Very nice looking machine indeed. Around the back, usual array of ports. We've got parallel, serial, Ethernet, and some audio ports, and of course some USB sockets, and PS2 mouse and keyboard. The monitor itself is matching and absolutely gorgeous. It is a 14 inch. Here's the side view and after a bit of scrubbing has come out really well. It's a very light monitor and very almost a bit sort of retro sci-fi in my opinion. Now as a strange feature it can do this which actually makes the amount of space it takes up a lot less and it looks really really elegant. Now just look at that bad boy. So here we are with the keyboard as well which does match and some speakers that have popped out of nowhere. These also kind of match. The one on the right is slightly yellowed, you can't tell that from the picture but um, they are working and they do sort of add to the overall elegance and aesthetics of the machine. I believe it was designed in France, it does have that kind of French feel to it. I mean that in a good way. So let's power on and see what's working and what's not working or what's there and what's not. So booting at the computer, so far so good, the BIOS is booting just fine. We have a disk boot failure so there's a good chance we don't have a hard drive or the hard drive is damaged. So if we now boot up the machine with an old MS-DOS disk, that will just give us an indication of whether the drive, the floppy drive is working and if the system itself is behaving itself. Looks like it pretty much is. Asking for the time and date, which is typical with a DOS disk. If we do a directory, we can just check. Yeah, everything's working hunky-dory so far. Delving into the machine, we'll have to take off the side case here. Now this comes off rather easily, which I really, really like. Taking the lid off, we can see inside, and there's quite a bit of space in there. It's not too cramped so far already see the power supply on the top left and the drives on the top right of the image. Of course I've got an array of cables in there. Looking at the board itself we have a rather dusty fan there so we'll give that a bit of a scrub and uh, a lot of dust down on the bottom of the case here so I should have to have to give that a bit of a clean up. Two RAM chips as mentioned we'll take those out in a minute And CMOS battery standard CR232. I'll have to check that's working. Other than that, it's looking pretty clean and tidy. We've got the drive bays here. And the hard drive cable. Obviously the hard drive has been removed. And the power cable there. Here's a close-up of the CPU fan which needs a bit of a de-dusting. That's pretty common with these things. 
Project Reboot as well is not the cleanest environment. Here's a close-up of the dust. And I'll use a combination of things to, to de-dust it. Unfortunately I don't have a professional blower here. Who does? But um, I'm sure I can get that out. Looks like there's no major stains or marks or leakages or anything to worry about. It's just uh, dust. So overall it looks pretty clean and tidy inside of here. We'll give it a bit of a wipe down. Just to get off that superficial dust and just feel a, bit, a little bit better about the whole experience. If you get a really dirty system, of course, it would be worth removing all the components and cleaning the case. You could put that in a dishwasher, for example. But in this case, it's not that bad. It's just like a dirty, uh, dirty living room that's been neglected for a few months, perhaps. So I'll give that a bit of a scrub down, a bit of a dust de-dusting, get on the CPU fan. For now I just want to get the machine sort of tested, see where it's at, see where we can move forward with it. And that's nice and clean. Toothbrush can also help to get to those hard to reach areas. There we go, nice and clean. Bit more of a scrub with the toothbrush. And also using a couple of old paint brushes can help. If you are at home doing this, what you could do, which would probably be better, would be to use an air blower in a can, which is about five pounds. But at the moment I don't have one, so this will have to do. But it's not the dirtiest machine in the world, like I said. Let's have a look at the RAM chips. Sometimes it's good to remove them and pop them back in anyway, because they can come a little bit loose in transit. I've had a machine that wouldn't boot due to that. And this looks like a one gig RAM chip. And the other one looks like it's probably matching yes it is so I've got a couple of old hard drives here pretty much all the same all Seagates and 40 gigabytes should be just fine for this machine 40 gigabytes means you've got plenty of space to put this on which is Windows XP I'm just going to put that on for today just to get a bit of a flavour for the machine, check it's all okay. We'll pop the RAM, RAM chips back in. And here's a close up of the hard drive, which is a Seagate at a 3, and it has a Hewlett Packard logo on it as well. And back of the drive we've got the jumpers so you can set that for master or slave or what have you also you can limit the number of gigabytes so 
So here are the jumper settings on the drive, as you can see. And we need to get the drive in there now. There's a lot of cables in the way here, and we've got three bays already full up. I didn't want to mess around removing any of the other drives for now, so we'll have to just screw the drive in at the bottom for now. In this case, I'm going to connect the cables first because once the drive's in, it's quite difficult to get the connectors in, especially in a cramped space like this with all this cabling going on. I may or may not add a compact flash solution to this, but for now I need to see what the machine is, what's going on with it. So I haven't inserted all the screws, I'm just going to insert screw two screws for now until I've managed to boot and test the machines all okay. If there is a problem with the hard drive for example, it's much easier to remove it with just the two screws there, but it's nice and secure so it'll do. Most of this is really common sense. Thumbs up. Okay, so back to the machine itself. It's all looking rather spiffing. Let's have a boot up again with the new hard drive installed. So the BIOS probably will auto detect in a machine of this age, I would think so. I'd be very surprised if it didn't. And yes, it has a warning about the hard disk. So looking around, let's have a look at the CMOS for the first time. A lot of options in here, not too many that we need to fiddle with right at the moment. We'll just stick with what's there and worry about all these kind of things later. We need to install an OS and an operating system so a lot of this could change anyway so for now I'm not going to worry too much just good to have a quick look around see what's in it unfortunately I forgot to put the jumper on the hard drive so it's counted it as a slave drive but that shouldn't make a difference for now later I can open up the case again and just put a jumper in there basically it's almost like having a drive B as opposed to a drive A Here actually we can check the voltages. With some machines I do check the voltages on a multimeter before powering on, but in the case of this one the condition is remarkably good. And so I powered it on and the voltages are fine according to the BIOS. So that's one less job for me to do. Back to booting up again. Here's the boot screen, which is a Phoenix Award BIOS, and here's our Windows XP disk we're ready to install. Don't worry, I won't show you the whole process, just a few bits and bobs for those who are interested. Uh, maybe I'll speed up a few bits or cut them out completely. So if we reboot the machine now, we can start the installation of Windows XP. As it says on screen, boot from CD. I wanted to put XP because this is the operating system that originally came with the machine. So with this machine, I'm trying to keep it pretty much like it was originally, to the extent that I can, of course. The hard drive is not the standard one that came with it, but... Here is the XB setup screen, so you can see if you've never done it. I didn't have a home copy to hand, so I'm installing XP Professional, but they're very similar. So you can see there the hard disk. Uh, we're now copying the files across to it. We're now formatting the disk. 
which is just under 40 gigabytes, 38 after formatting. Reboot the computer again. XP is an operating system that you do have to keep a bit of an eye on. It does require a tiny bit of maintenance. You can't just insert uh, and leave it to it. So we'll just check here that we've got the boot devices correct. We want it to boot obviously to the hard drive first. Here's our Windows XP splash screen. We're not finished yet, but the system's starting to install on the hard drive. Keen eared listeners might notice the hard drive sound now as it's writing the data onto it. It's quite a noisy hard drive, this one. I might have to consider whether to leave that one in there or not. Being XP insist on taking our telephone number. This is because it automatically installs some of the networking protocols. Okay, I'll just have to make up some numbers. I think it won't let me cancel. Make sure we're in the United Kingdom. Whether we're united or not. Okay, now we've got the next icon, we can just get past this. Time and date settings. Pretty much worry about that later. And we'll carry on installing. Hmm, listen to that lovely hard drive. Mechanical goodness. So I had to find a PS2 mouse, and I did. I did try an adapter with a USB mouse, but it didn't want to work. Probably need some drivers. No biggie for now. Like I said, just want to show you the machine, make sure it's working. And so far it seems pretty good. The keyboard's working, the mouse is working, the BIOS is okay, the hard drive's working. CD drives are working, floppy drives working, XP seems to have installed OK. Have a quick look around. I still think this operating system looks quite modern, but you might disagree. Love these old uh, screensavers. Classic. Have a look at the settings of the monitor. Could probably crank it up a bit higher. Let's try 1280. Bear in mind we don't have any drivers installed. Hmm, doesn't look too good. I think 1024 is its sweet spot. Probably what the monitor is designed to do, to be honest. We'll quick look around, see what we've got. It's always nice to confirm what Windows has picked up. Let's get to our classic settings. I like to do old school like this. And there we go, we verify our Athlon XP there. Look at the device manager. Yeah, there's a few things without drivers. It's also a nice way of seeing exactly what you've got inside your box. So 
So without drivers, a lot of things won't be um, workable yet. But let's see if we can play something in the DVD drive, something I like very much. Bit of Garth Marenghi. Now there's a possibility without drivers this won't work, but I wanted to show you some uh, some other features of the machine if I can. Okay, so let's fire up that disk. So we do have a DVD drive, Windows Media Player's come up. And we have to go through this. Oh, and it doesn't seem to like it. I think that's because of drivers, etc. So no Garth Marenghi for us today. So I do have one of these compact flash adapters, which plugs into an IDE port. It can re require a little bit of faffing sometimes. I'm not sure I want to use it and install it today though. What I have done is get a USB stick and put a few games on, not many. Just enough to sample the system. And there we go, a bit of Star Glider 2. This should give us a good demo of the machine. Lovely screenshot there. So there we go, that's pretty much all I wanted to show for today. I might do a follow-up video. If anyone's got any comments, then please comment. If you've got any questions, then please question. If you like this, then, uh, then like it by clicking the like button, of course. And consider subscribing and also consider Project Reboot for your bargain PC deals. Thanks for watching. Retro Marky out.